Tonight, Google announces the Nexus 6 and Lollipop. Apple accidentally reveals the new iPads. And should you freak out over something called the Poodle vulnerability? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 194, for Wednesday, October 15th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to over 50 job boards with just one click. Try ZipRecruiter with a free four-day trial right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. Hi, everybody. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. Google introduced the Nexus 6, which is the biggest Nexus smartphone that Google has ever released with a 6-inch display. Gosh, it makes the iPhone 6 look positively small. Like the Galaxy Note 4, the Nexus 6 has a quad HD display, a Snapdragon 805 processor, 13 megapixel rear camera, 2 megapixel front camera, 32 20 milliamp battery, either 32 or 64 gigabytes of storage, and comes in either blue or white. The Nexus 6 is also running Android 5.0, aka Lollipop, which also got its big reveal today after first being shown off back in June. The phone also includes a Motorola Turbo Charger, so it's designed to charge the phone back up to six hours worth of battery life in only 15 minutes. Nice. The Nexus 6 sells unlocked for $649. But let's go back to Lollipop for a minute. Android L has a new look called uh, Material Design, 5,000 new APIs, and puts emphasis on voice. A lot of this has been available to developers since June. Lollipop is debuting on three new devices, the Nexus 6, obviously, the Nexus 9 tablet, and the Nexus Player streaming media device, and is coming to the Nexus 4, Nexus 5, Nexus 7, Nexus 10, and Google Play Edition devices in the coming weeks, but no firm date just yet. So Apple's iTunes Store accidentally, apparently, published screenshots for iOS 8.1 iPad user guide, which was inside iBooks. User, okay. The details, uh, the images look like there's going to be an iPad Air 2, an iPad Mini 3, and besides the fact that they're keeping up with the numbering convention, there's not a whole lot that's out of line from rumors. An updated design, touch ID sensors, those were expected. A gold option as well, also expected. An A8X processor, improved cameras. Hmm. Apple Pay is likely to be launching as well. You know, that 8.1 user guide sort of points to that. And the company is expected to not only unveil new iPads, but new iMacs tomorrow, including a new iMac with Retina display and OS X Yosemite. An AT&T employee speaking to Mac Rumors confirmed that the company no longer offers Beats Music subscriptions as an add-on service and no longer gives customers the option to sign up for Beats Music with a new phone plan. Beats Music and AT&T, you might recall, had an exclusive deal at one point before Beats initially debuted. But that might be over due to Apple's $3 billion purchase of both Beats Music and Beats Electronics in May of this year. So could Apple be planning to... Rebrand the whole thing, new Beats music? Probably not that far fetched at all. Recode is reporting that Apple may stop selling the Fitbit devices in its stores. Apple's just not getting along with anybody this week. Uh, Recode is citing anonymous sources uh, that say, well, after one week of Fitbit, Fitbit, rather, saying in a statement that it was still evaluating integration with HealthKit meaning it's not really signed on, which of course is Apple's new app that organizes health and fitness data on iOS. There may be some souring of a partnership here. Other health and fitness apps like uh, Why Things, Jawbone Up, MyFitnessPal, they've all already updated their apps to give users the option to send their data to HealthKit. Currently, Fitbit works on not just iOS, but Android and also Windows devices and is sold in over 37,000 retail stores worldwide, including Amazon and Best Buy, Kohl's, Target, and Walmart. HBO has some good news for cord cutters. The service will sell a version of its service starting in 2015 in the U.S. that won't require a pay TV subscription. Cutting that cable. CEO Richard Plepler announced at an investor meeting that the company will go beyond the wall whatever that means, and launch a standalone over-the-top version of HBO next year and would not only work with current partners, but possibly other partners, although nobody's naming names. 
Netflix, not having a great week. Besides having to compete more directly with HBO next year, the company announced that it added fewer than 1 million new subscribers in the U.S. and fewer than 2 million worldwide. CEO Reed Hastings and CFO David Wells wrote in a letter to investors along uh, with their updated earnings. This quarter, we over-forecasted membership growth, which is obviously not a good thing. Netflix stock saw a dip, a big dip, 25% in after hours trading today or $100 off of the stock price. The company recently expanded into several European countries, including France, Germany, and Belgium, picked up new subscribers there, but also brought down company margins. Netflix is still adding original content though, including a new uh, Judd Apatow series and a sequel to the film Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Oh, and every episode of Friends is also coming to Netflix soon. That will keep you occupied for a while. Coming up, Google unveiled Android 5.0 Lollipop, but what does the campus Lollipop statue look like? I'll show you. And up next, I'll talk with t uh, rather Kim Zetter from Wired about the latest security threat named Poodle, which might actually be scarier than what a poodle may conjure up in your mind. But first, are you hiring? Are you building out a team? If so, do you know where to post your job to find the absolute best person to, to bring on and hire? With ZipRecruiter, you can post to over 50 job sites all at once. It saves you a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of people probably wanting the job that aren't qualified. Posting a job is important, but you've got to filter through the responses you see. You've got to uh, narrow down to the best candidates. At ZipRecruiter, you can view, you can download, you can print, and you can share resumes with colleagues. You can screen candidates by asking real-world questions, identify the people who are actually qualified, and you just post once. You watch these candidates roll in. ZipRecruiter has a nice, easy-to-use interface. You don't have to worry about emails back and forth or calls to your office. You rate candidates, and you hire the right person fast. You can find out right now why ZipRecruiter has been used by over 250,000 businesses. Our viewers and listeners can try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. And thanks to ZipRecruiter for their support of Tech News Tonight. Joining us now is Kim Zetter. Sorry, I butchered your name a second ago, Kim. <laughs> Senior right. staff reporter at Wired. Welcome. Thank you. So, okay, we, uh, we, we've talked about a vulnerability uh, called Poodle. Uh, in fact, you yes. wrote today's article uh, that it was not cute. So, in essence, what are we looking at? So, I guess I should explain the name first. Uh, Poodle's got a very techie, uh, it's an acronym, and it stands for, I had to actually write it down because I knew I wouldn't remember it. It stands for Padding Oracle on Downgraded Legacy Encryption. Aha. And this is involved. Yeah, <laughs> and this is involving SSL3. So SSL3 is, uh, SSL version 3, SSL is the protocol that's used to encrypt your, your traffic connection between your browser and websites, also between your email client on your computer and an email server at work. Um, it's an old version of the, the protocol, and it's been replaced by something called TLS in most places. But a lot of uh, servers and websites have to remain compatible with, S with SSL uh, for browsers that still use it. So uh, the problem here is that what someone can do with this vulnerability is hijack your session cookie, which is the cookie that when you, for instance, log into Google, Google installs a session cookie on your computer and that sort of locks in that connection between your computer and Google for the duration of that, that session that you're into the account. Mm -hmm. um, and this session cookie is encrypted and this attack allows someone who's on the same Wi-Fi network you are, uh, let's say at a coffee shop, uh, to sort of ins insert themselves between you and the website and gain access to that session cookie and figure out what it is and hijack your account without needing your password. Now, Steve Gibson, who's a host of a security show here on the Twit Network, Security Now, uh, he is of the mind that this would be extremely difficult to pull off. In fact, he says, I'm not even concerned at all <laughs> as a, you know, just a regular citizen as somebody running a business uh, because it requires, you know, tens of thousands of failed web connections. And he, he yeah. even says, you know, some, some of yeah. this is, uh, some of the reporting on this is, seems to be overstating how dangerous this actually is. Yeah, I don't think it's all that dangerous. Um, the He's right that in order to actually exploit the vulnerability takes some, a bit of work. 
And also it's getting patched very quickly here or it's being, uh, I guess they're mitigating it, not, not quite patching it. So yeah, I don't see that this is very alarming. It's certainly not in the category with the you know, heart bleed and shell shock, the other two vulnerabilities that we've seen uh, recently in the last, uh, I guess, the last year. Although so, shell shock um, was interesting because you know, this is a vulnerability that's over 20 years old and Poodle is, is also, you know, it's, it's been around yeah. a while. I wonder yeah, why in such a short time we've seen these two surface. Well, it's interesting. Uh, I think, first of all, people are taking a closer look. Um, it, they're not, you know, in the same, the, the vulnerabilities aren't in the same things. Um, you're right to point out that these are vulnerabilities that have been around for years and no one has noticed. And we're going to see a lot of those, I think. As more attention is paid to infrastructure like this, then obviously we'll find holes that have been around for a long time. The question always remains when you discover it is how long has someone been exploiting it during the time that we didn't know about it? As you mentioned, uh, it is being fixed uh, for anybody who wants to, you know, as their takeaway from our conversation of do I need to be worried in any specific situation, uh, Wi-Fi hotspots, anything else? Well, what's happening is that, uh, you know, system administrators have been told about this prior even to the release of this. Um, so they've been working on disabling SSL so that it's not, they won't support this. So what will happen is if you're a user who tries to connect using SSL3, uh, your browser won't be able to connect if you don't have uh, any other way of connecting. Um, the browser makers like Mozilla, and who makes Firefox and IE, they are also changing the browsers to remove SSL as an option or at least to remove it as the default. And in some cases, they are sending out instructions for you to remove that from your own browser in the preferences manual or in the preferences menu. Kim Zetter is the senior staff reporter over at Wired. Thanks so much for joining us, Kim. First time on TN2. I love that. Uh, before you go, let folks yeah. know where they can keep up with your work. Uh, well, all of my work is on Wired.com and the security section. Awesome. And Kim Zetter on Twitter as well. Thanks, Kim. Thank you. All right. Finally, we uh, mentioned that Google uh, had unveiled the lollipop statue, as is customary at Google headquarters. A uh, little mini event. And the company statue, you know, they have a statue collection. So this is the Android 5.0 lollipop statue. It's more like an Android holding a lollipop, but, you know, it got some attention nonetheless. How adorable. I'm just really glad that it wasn't licorice. And don't forget tomorrow, Twit's live coverage of Apple's iPad and OS X Yosemite and hopefully iMacs and maybe even a Mac Mini, you never know, event is starting at about 9.30 a.m. Pacific time here in the Twit studio. Myself, Mike Elgin, Leo Laporte will all be following uh, the keynote, which will be streamed live. Hopefully you will join us. Hop on at 9.30 Pacific time tomorrow a.m. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash tn2. You can write us with feedback at tn2 at twit.tv. And Tech News Today is our morning news program. If you haven't subscribed to that show, well, you're missing out. It's tomorrow and every weekday live at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.